I am Andre and I'm a black nerd with a review for you, but it reviews X-Men Dark Phoenix, or is it just Dark Phoenix or Dark Phoenix emphasis on the X in Phoenix? I don't know. I'm gonna give you the good, I'm gonna give you the bad, I'm gonna give you the nerdy. Man, I feel bad for Dark Phoenix. Like they are getting a raw deal here. They have had so many disadvantages go up against them before this movie got released. They were supposed to come out months ago, got delayed. Then they had to come out after Avengers Endgame, one of the biggest superhero movies, not only of the year, but just in general. And then while you're trying to do promotion for the movie, everyone's talking about the Disney Fox merger and you're under Fox and you're a Marvel property. So it's pretty safe to assume that this is it for you. Hugh Jackman won't even come back and do a Logan cameo for your movie and I even read recently that the ending of the movie had to be changed because it supposedly had similarities to another superhero movie let's see X-Men Dark Phoenix is a superhero movie set in the 90s featuring a woman that has a strange power inside of her that she either has to try to control or just unleash oh it's obvious Wonder Park totally see it but you know what if you're the last movie this is the time to go out with a bang right let's have a last hurrah if this is gonna be the last movie that we're gonna do let's do it strong and does x-men dark phoenix do that no i'm gonna go good bad on this like i'm gonna keep flip-flopping back and forth so the good of this movie is the premise is sound the x-men go on a space mission they try to save some people they're also at a time where Humans are actually like, mutants are cool. They keep helping us save the world. So we chill with them right now. But during their space mission, something happens to Jean Grey. They think she's gonna be dead, but she ends up surviving. But of course, through that accident, some dark forces, some dark power inside of her, or something that she's been holding back all this time is now ready to come out. So it's all the setup for a good, strong movie. But the thing about the movie is once the premise is set, it never really goes that far from the premise. You're like, all right, we got it, let's go. You. Put it all out there, let's go. I'm ready, like I'm already running ahead of you, movie. Let's, why are you, why are you back there? Everything about it sounds like something big and epic is gonna happen, but nothing ever happens that is big or epic. The stakes in this movie, for me, felt no bigger than the stakes were in Apocalypse or First Class. This feels like an origin story for Jean Grey after receiving these Dark Phoenix feelings. Sometimes when I'm watching this movie, I feel like this feels like the beginning of a new storyline for the X-Men franchise, but due to certain circumstances, ain't happening. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to business. Fox came in and was like, uh, no, this is a finale. So change your origin story to a finale. Where's the Kinberg cut? <laughs> I need that pre-Disney <laughs> Dark Phoenix Kinberg cut. Where's that petition? The actors in this movie, as usual, are bringing it the best that they can, particularly James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender as Charles Xavier and Magneto. They always bring it. And I have to give props to Sophie Turner because having to play a dark version of your character, that takes a lot. And that's something that not everyone can possibly do. So I respect that she was able to pull that off. And when Jean Grey goes full Dark Phoenix, that's some of the good stuff in the movie, man. Jean Grey is like, telepathic She-Hulk. The whole movie, she's just like, I got this power in me. I don't want to use it. I just try to control it or I'm trying to get rid of it. Just leave me alone. Don't mess with me. And everyone's like, I'm gonna mess with you. I'm gonna keep asking you questions. I'm gonna keep talking to you even though you told me not to talk to you. And she's like, leave me alone, leave me alone. And them little veins, the little crevices in her face start popping up. That eye changes color. And then all of a sudden, I'm your Phoenix. And she just goes off on people objects if you're in a car get out the car if you're in a plane get out the plane if you're on ground get off the ground because wherever you are near her it ain't good there are times when she ain't even gotta like move she can just put her hand up seriously like you could be right here in front of her and she put her hand up and all of a sudden you're like whoa what's that? talk to the hands gonna have a whole new meeting after this movie and then when she's all done and sees what damage she's done she's all like oh sorry <laughs> But the big problem with the actors or specifically the characters in this movie is a lot of them just aren't given a lot to do. Jessica Chastain's character in particular, I feel like a lot of characters aren't given their moment. A lot of the other characters, they'll use their powers, but there's never that moment where you're like, oh, that was a good one with that character. Some characters are just pushed to the wayside. Like, are you expecting a 90s version of the Quicksilver slow-mo scene? Can we get a good storm moment? Like, I just need like one just strong, like, Hell yeah, this is a woman that can control the weather. She throws a little wind here and there. She gives people ice cubes for the drinks. <laughs> but all she does here is zap, <laughs> lightning, lightning. And I don't wanna call anybody out. I'm not gonna say any names because I don't like getting on actors about their acting, but there's just some performances in this movie. I will not say any names. 
<laughs> but they are just like, let me get through this. I'm done. They just ain't feeling it. They're just trying to be a little bit darker, a little bit more seedier, questioning the moralities of certain characters throughout the movie. Like the darker tone, like that it's kind of pacing itself and not going full in on the action or the silliness that you see in some of the other superhero movies. That's cool. I think some of that does work in this movie. Dramatic stuff for the dark stuff worked for me in theory, in tone, in feel, but never in heart, never in emotion. I never took any of it in. There are times when this movie is like, this is a moment where you should feel sad and I don't feel anything and that's really weird. I feel like all the elements of a standard superhero movie are there. I just don't have any emotion towards it. But there's this awesome scene that happens on a train. That's the best part of the movie. That's when you're seeing most of the characters use their powers. That's when you're seeing the fighting sequences, the cool setups. There's this shot of Magneto using his powers. Nightcrawler gets mad and just goes off. It's the stuff where I'm like, oh yeah, now we're talking. Now this movie's kicking into high gear. I can't wait to see what happens after that and that's it. Sorry if that's a spoiler, but all this stuff that happens on the train, that is technically coming towards the end. That train is coming to its last stop. I feel like that's the kind of energy that was needed earlier. Because even some of the action sequences that we get prior to that work, but they just, for some reason, it just, it never feels like it's a big scale. And this is a movie that supposedly has a $200 million budget. And I'm looking at it sometimes like it's one of those smaller scale <laughs> superhero movies. Like it just, I don't know, man. It just, there's something about the energy just wasn't there. I felt like it was all slow build, slow build, slow build. And I love a build. I think it's good to have those builds in a movie. But there was just a certain point in the movie where I was like, we need to go. I gotta be honest, man. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I haven't seen it in a while, so I don't want to confirm this, but... If I have to compare this and Last Stand, whether one is better or worse than the other can be debated, but I'll tell you this, The Last Stand had energy. This movie is on autopilot. The pieces are there, the story is there, the good actors are there, it looks nice. I saw it in 3D, it looked really great in 3D. Like all this stuff is there, but I do feel like it's a movie that probably could have been better and I don't know if the problem is things that were happening in the movie that would have not been fixed regardless or if the problem is what changes or things had to happen to the movie due to the situation that it was in when your studio is being bought out and you're using characters that the studio that's buying you out goes, we want those characters. I just, I don't know. But there's probably also some things in this movie that didn't work for me that were probably there from the beginning. So at the end of the day, I'm gonna give this movie a good luck bear. And that's kind of my version of, eh. There's never a time where I feel upset or so angry at it that I'm just ready to scream. There's never a moment where I'm like, this is so bad, it's good. But there's also never a moment where I go like, oh my God, this is so much fun, or I'm so excited, or this is amazing. I don't know everything there is to know about the Dark Phoenix Saga, but I keep hearing it's so amazing that people were so mad that it wasn't done right in the last day, and that they're like, we gotta do it again. And all this movie is telling me is that maybe it's just better to read the book. <laughs> Take a look, it's in a book. A reading rainbow. Thanks for watching this video. All thoughts about the movie aside, if you at least liked the video that I made for you, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000. And X-Men had a cartoon in the 90s. Watch that. <laughs>